Hey guys, this is a continuation of our PowerPoint and our lecture series on adaptations. And today we're just going to look specifically at the adaptations of prey and the things that prey on them, predators. Um, sorry, I had the sniffles. As usual, you're looking for anything that's highlighted in yellow. I want to say it's only yellow today. And as usual, I'll be going over those things that I need you to write down with my laser and trying to give you enough time to copy everything down. So here we go. Adaptations of predators and prey. So to remind you, a predator is going to be something that's going to kill and eat something else for food. And the animal or organism that's being eaten, killed and eaten, is called the prey. Now, a lot of organisms are going to try to defend themselves. They're not going to just say, okay, well, here comes the lion. Let me lie down real quick so he can eat me. They're going to try to defend themselves from the predators. So they're adaptations that prey specifically generate, they specifically use, they specifically do, or things that they specifically do, sorry, that allow them to be not as easily killed. So I want you to look at the pictures real quick. You have a tortoise and we have an armadillo. Um, now both of these guys have what we call external adaptations and pretty much they have a really hard exterior like see these bumpy knobs on the tortoise these are really really hard like if a um, wolf or a lion or something tried to bite through his shell they would have a really hard time doing that because this is made up of some very very sturdy material now let's look at the armadillo the armadillo has armor and he has the ability to curl himself up into a ball when he's being attacked so just like the tortoise, his shell, well his armor, not his shell, but his armor, is going to make it really hard for a predator to kill him. So some external adaptations that prey can develop are having really, really hard shells or armor. Okay, so here we have a rhinoceros and an elephant. And both of these are two of the largest land animals that we have. The, the elephant is actually the largest and the rhinoceros is the second largest. And some of the adaptations that they develop um, is thick skin, which detracts or, de you know, not always prevents a predator from biting them, but it kind of helps out. And they also have horns, like right here, and tusks here and here that they will use for, pre for protection. So literally, elephants have been known to, like, gore or gouge, pretty much stab a lion or a hyena with its tusks to try and get prevent them from like attacking. Now do these things always work? No they don't because as we know these animals can still be eaten by predators but it helps them to survive like some of them will still survive. Now some animals and even some plants um, they don't make they don't have hard shells, they don't have a really tough skin. Instead what they do is what we call internal adaptations. So they will make toxins and also poisons that they will secrete in their skin or they'll just taste really, really bad. And it, these things will make um, anything trying to eat them sick. So here is a picture of a poison dart frog. See how they're that bright blue color? That kind of tells predators that, hey, I don't taste very good, I'm poisonous, don't try to eat me. And here's poison ivy, which we're all familiar with. If you brush up against it, you get these really nasty, like, welts and blisters. And it's because both of these organisms use toxins and poisons as an adaptation against prey. If you don't taste good, something's not going to eat you. If you make someone sick or, and kill them, they're not going to eat you. All right, so here's another... Um, example of some of those toxic and distasteful poisons. Anything in the animal kingdom, and sometimes even the plant kingdom, that's brightly colored is pretty much an, ad an advertisement saying, I don't taste good, or I will kill you, don't eat me. So we use colors and like stripes and patterns a lot to um, warn predators that we're not good to eat. So again, some more poison dart frogs. This is a monarch butterfly. They're really, really poisonous. Here are skunks. We know skunks can spray this really nasty smelling stuff and it makes us sick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, 
even plants will come up with adaptations. And this one is not so much an adaptation against a predator. It's actually an adaptation to attract pollinators. You know that plants can't move around in order to reproduce. They depend on animals to come in and get pollen from one flower and put it on another flower. So these animals are called pollinators. Plants, especially flowers, will use their very bright and pretty colors to attract bees and birds so that they will want to come and get nectar from the flower and, re and um, pollinate the flower in the process. Okay, another... Hmm, sorry, the picture is missing right here. But another adaptation that some prey animals will develop is camouflage. Pretty much what they do is they hide themselves in plain sight. They make themselves look like their environment so that it's hard for the predator to see them. So this is an example of a leaf bug right here. And if it was further away, this you wouldn't be able to tell the leaf, which is this part here and this part here, from the leaf bug because it looks just like the leaf that it's sitting on. Here's a walking stick, and they have the ability to blend into like tree branches and tree barks because they look like twigs. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry that some of the words moved. But again, we're still talking about adaptations of prey. Um, what you will find happening is a lot of prey will live in huge groups, like this huge flock of birds or a huge herd of wildebeest or a school of fish. And living in a group is an adaptation against a predator because predators will eat the animals that are weak and sick and they'll leave all the healthy and strong animals alone because those weak and sick animals are easier to kill. If I was a lion, I was running down Sorry, if I was a lion and I was running down this pack of um, wildebeest or this herd of wildebeest, I'm just going to try to kill the slowest animal. So that way I don't have to run forever to get like a, a big, strong, fast animal. So this weeds out the pack. Okay. <clears throat> Now, predators will also have adaptations. So just like how the prey have adaptations, predators have adaptations as well. And a predator's adaptations is going to allow the predator to kill and catch their prey. It's allowing them to get their meal. So some of the common adaptations of predators that you will see are fangs, or really big teeth, and claws, really sharp teeth and really big claws. So here is a Tyrannosaurus rex fossil. And if you look on the end, you can see it has these really sharp looking curved, right here, curved um, claws. And that was helpful for ripping animals apart. Here's a tiger. If you look into the tiger's mouth, it has all these sharp teeth, but it also has really big fangs on the sides, on both the top jaw and the bottom jaw. And this helps it to grip onto its prey and to rip it apart so that it can eat it. Sorry, getting my laser. So another set of adaptations is just sometimes you adapt to what kinds of food you eat. So animals that are plant eating, animals that eat leaves and grass and stuff for, you know, for food, they will have flat teeth. And those teeth are designed to crush or to grind up the food that they eat, which are plant material. It doesn't make sense for a horse to have sharp teeth when all that it's eating are leaves or grass. Okay, now birds, especially predatory birds like hawks and eagles, so this would be an example of an eagle. Here's another kind of eagle. This is a peregrine falcon, but they have really sharp hooked beaks. Look at the big beak on this eagle right here. Look at that sharp hook. And they also have talons, like really huge claws on their feet, and that allows them to grab their prey, and then their beaks allow them to tear it apart. So some adaptations that predatory birds will have would be talons and sharp beaks. Now not every bird is going to be a meat eater. Some birds eat seeds and if you look at these birds like here are some parrots and like here's another kind of parrot some little paracletes and stuff. They have really short beaks but they're really strong and they're pointed and they're designed to crack open seeds and nuts. So adaptations of birds that don't eat meat will be pointed, short, and strong beaks. Okay, now animals like 
snakes and scorpions and spiders, they create poisons in their body, like they're venomous. And it's a way for them to easily catch their prey. So this guy, he's going to have fangs in his mouth, and inside of his fangs, he's going to have venom. This is a brown recluse spider, which is really, really poisonous. When they bite you, they pretty much paralyze their victim, and then it's easy for them to eat whatever it is they're trying to eat. Okay. Now, remember we talked about prey having camouflage? Well, sometimes predators have camouflage as well. If you look in this picture, it looks like there's just a bunch of leaves, but there's actually... Hold on, let me change. Let me change to a pen real quick. Okay, so in this picture, there's actually a predator. I'm going to outline it so hopefully you can see it. Here's the head. And all of this is its body. Right here. And here are its legs. This is a kind of praying mantis. And praying mantises eat other bugs. Like they feed on other bugs. And uh, they have to move really quickly because sometimes, you know, if the bug sees them, it'll fly away. Well, because he's camouflaged, when you first look at the area, it just looks like it's a bunch of dead leaves. It doesn't look like there's something there that can kill you. Here's another example of an animal that uses camouflage. This is an octopus, and I'm going to outline him so that you can see him. This is the front of his head. And right here are his eyes. Okay, and then here's his body. And what he's done is he's buried himself in the sand, and then he's changed his skin color so that it looks like the sand. But he's sitting right there just waiting for like a shrimp or a lobster or a crab to crawl on by, and he's just going to jump out and grab it and eat it. So camouflage allows predators to be more effective hunters because they can easily track and hunt their prey. They can hide and wait for the prey to get closer and then jump up and, and grab it. Okay, now the survival of your predator and the, and the prey that it eats is very closely related. As your prey population gets larger, your predator, your predator sorry, population is also going to increase. And as the prey population decreases, as more of them start to die, the predator population will also decrease. So if you look at this graph, let me change colors again. Um, the lynx, which is the dotted line, I'm going to make the lynx red. So this line right here, that's going to be your predator. And the solid blue line, that's your prey. So as the prey populations increase in size, look at how big, you know, we're getting lots of numbers here for our, our snowshoe rabbits or whatever it is that this is showing. As this line increases and goes up and down, this predator population is going to increase as well. So as the prey population increases, the predator population increases. As the prey population decreases, the predator population is going to decrease as well. All right, so that is it for our lecture over adaptations of prey, predators and prey. Um, I'll keep giving you instructions in a little bit.